Hello and welcome to another Postgres walkthrough. This walkthrough we're going to walk through the stuff we're doing in the second lecture. This is a lecture about database design and foreign keys and, uh, and, and various relations. So the one thing we're doing in this lecture is something we're going to automate much later, but that is building, um, uh, building database tables that are linked together and database rows that are linked to, to other rows by hand just so you can see them. Just Once we automate them, I don't want you to forget how they work. So we're going to have a bunch of tables and the data model here is there's a track table that has a foreign key to an album table. The album table has a foreign key to the artist table and then the track also has a link to gener the, the, the genre table. And these lookup tables, I call these lookup tables they have an ID, which is a, you know, automatically assigned. We put a name in. We call it unique just because if we're going to call a Led Zeppelin, we only want one Led Zeppelin row because ultimately we're going to make Led Zeppelin be a number. So you see these. This one here also has this table. Has, the album table has a foreign key. And so the thing, the thing is, is these, these, these foreign key columns are just integer numbers. The ID serial is a little specialist, but it's just an integer number that's automatically generated. And so after we've come up with a data model, designed the picture, then we can create all these tables. Now, this is all set up so that you can mostly just cut and paste things really fast into, you know, I've got a, I've logged into my um, Postgres and off I go. And, and I, <laughs> I can go as fast as I want with these things. I can just grab a whole bunch, and because they end in semicolons, and it's it, it, somehow the the Postgres client keeps up with the pasting, and it all works pretty well. And so there you go. I've created an artist, album, genre, and track table. And so now I'm going to do some inserting. So the key thing is if I look like insert into artist Led Zeppelin here. And then I select star from artist. You oops, artist. I hit the tab button there. Select star from artist. Then you see, and the ID is the the key thing there. And um, and I'll put another artist, ACDC. So these are the lookup tables. These are the tables that we are um, filling in with the string values so that we can create numbers that we can use everywhere else in the system. Now. The foreign keys, like artist ID, you have to explicitly. Um, we'll come up with other ways later, where with subselects, etc., that they can look these up. But in the short term, we're just going to do this manually, and so that means that we need to remember that who made who, which is ACDC, is number two. So forever in this system now, ACDC is going to be the number two. So now we can make an album and indicate that it's artist number two with this insert statement who made who and number two okay and so we can do the same thing with Led Zeppelin's album four there you go and we'll do the same thing a genre is another lookup table so we'll just insert these two things make sure you do these things in order otherwise my numbers don't work anymore select star from genre so we can see what the genre numbers are now, if I was doing this, I might have to write this down on a piece of paper, but I already did it, so I've got these numbers just right. So this looks, this next insert into track, this looks pretty really complex, but it's just got title, length, rating, count, album ID, genre ID, and this, this two and this one at the very back end here, those are the numbers that are the foreign keys. So you can't really sort of tell the difference between count, which is just an integer, and album ID and genre ID. They're just integers in this particular insert statement. And so the database knows because of the fact that we use this, it's a reference and it's a foreign key and we've communicated on the create statement what these really mean. And so MySQL can optimize them, but in the insert statement, they're just numbers. And so we can put all those things in and we now, uh -oh. oh, I forgot to copy and paste, see? Oh, this is really cool. Insert into genre name values rock, duplicate key violates unique constraint. This keeps you from inserting it. I didn't cut and paste quite right, and so I'd already I tried to do that twice. But if you look in track, uh, no, in uh, I tried to reinsert the genre, but because I have this varchar 128 unique, the fact that I already had rock in there, my database can com complained. Now this is not a bug. This is 
This is me in my database create statement protecting me as typing in SQL commands from doing something stupid and making a mistake, right? And so it saved me from myself. So let me copy and paste this correctly and get that record inserted into track, insert into track. And we got to, and we do a select star from track and see those numbers. And even in this select, the album ID and the genre ID just look like normal integers. But inside the database, trust me, my um, Postgres is thinking this through very carefully. So let's insert the rest of these things and get them all in. So now we have four records. Select count star from track semicolon. Oh. So we got four rows in there, four rows. So this is our first join. We're going to read the album title and the artist name from the album joined with the artist on the condition that the album's artist ID is equal to the artist ID. And so let's take a look at that. There we go, right? Who made who? And, then, and so that's going across two tables. It might be easier to see this if we show album ID artist ID and album ID in the query. So this next query does that. So now we can see how the artist ID, the rows are the rows that match between artist ID and album ID. And those are the rows we're seeing. But what the select does, these, this album, um, album.artist ID and artist.id don't really need to be shown for us as the developer. I'm just showing it so that we can kind of understand the database mechanisms that are going on. Now, you can kind of see something about how joins work if we run a cross join between those, between two things. A cross join doesn't filter out the things that don't match. So the cross join shows all the combinations of all the tracks with all the combinations of all the genres. And then you'll notice that sometimes these numbers match between genre ID and, I, and the genre dot ID. Sometimes they don't match. And so really a regular join is a cross join with a filter that requires the match. And so that's where the on clause comes in. The on clause says, do a cross join, but throw away the things that don't match the on clause. So we can see that. So we'll turn this into a normal old inner join or non cross join with an on clause. And we see that it filters out only the things that we want where the rows really match. There's one there. There's one there. How about to rock matches? Who made who matches? And then stairway is not metal and black dog is not metal. And the cross join shows all those combinations, but the on clause of the regular join filters out so that we only see the matches. And after a while, we just stop thinking about this to realize that this is a cross join with a filter. A regular old join is a cross join without a, without a filter. And if you want to do the whole big select where we join across all four tables, it's, it's not all that hard. You got a join and you got an on clause. You got another join, you got an on clause. And the on clause is, looks the same. I mean, we name these artist underscore ID and the, and the primary keys are ID and the foreign keys have the name of the table. This greatly helps, this, this convention greatly helps when you're typing uh, join commands. Okay. And so that's the uh, many to one relationship. That's uh, three tables and two, uh, four tables and three many to one relationships. Um, just to show you how the, uh, the on delete cascade works, uh, let me do a select star from tracks. And you see that I have four records there. And then if I, um, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Select star from track, and then if I delete genre, and, the, and what we're demonstrating here is the fact that, that we, the track table says on delete of a genre row, delete the corresponding track. And so you'll see that even though I'm just deleting something from genre, so select star from genre, You see, there's only one left, but the real effect is that we can do a select star from track and those two went away. So the genre ID that had twos are gone now. And so that's because the delete from the genre table cascaded into the track table. So that's pretty cool.
Okay. So now let's switch to many to many, but the key to many to many is it's not that all that crazy. The many to many is a two one to many relationships. And so if we take a look at um, this many many to relationship between students, courses, and members, the student is just a lookup table, right? You see that it got an ID, a, a name, an email that's varchar unique, um, a course table that's got a title that's varchar unique. Again, that varchar unique keeps us from making mistakes and uh, putting duplicate things in. So let's create those two tables. Those two tables are the basic tables, but then we have here. Some people want to put an ID serial in the table, but I'm going to make it so that the primary key in this table is a combination of the student ID and the course ID. So this is the join table or the junction table or whatever. Student ID is a foreign key into student. Course ID is a foreign key in, in, into uh, course. And these look exactly like foreign keys because literally many to many is this middle table with two left and right outbound um, foreign keys. And then primary key, you can actually put a combination. So it's the combination. So one comma two is okay. Student ID of one, course ID of two is okay. Student ID of two, two, two is okay. But you can't have two rows that have identical combination of student ID and course ID. So that's the primary key. And you want that because you really just want to say, well, this student is only allowed to be in this course one time. We don't need extra rows. There might be times that you, when you don't care about that, when you can have more than one, perhaps in particular because we're modeling this role value at the connection between student, a student and a course. Maybe we've decided that we can have a student and course with a different role. And then I would make my primary key be student ID, course ID, comma role. And then there are those three things that have to be unique. So you could be in as a student and an instructor. So that that's just a data model. So the we have lookup tables, the student and the course lookup tables, and I'll just grab those insert statements and send them in. That's what's fun about this. So now I've just got um, select, I've got three records in each of the student and course tables. Select star from student, select star from course. We see three records, but really what we've also done is created the ID fields for these things. And now we're going to start adding the connections between them. And so we have to know these numbers. And again, now here I've got to insert into member, a whole series of insert into members. Now this was hard, and I had to like go back and get all the numbers right. But again, you see student ID, course ID are just integers. Like the first one is 1-1. One, one. That means Jane is going into the Python course, and she is going in as the instructor. 2-1 uh, means that uh, Ed is going into the Python course, and Ed is going in with the zero as the uh, student. And so I'm just going to blast all these things in there. I'm going to send these, uh, looks like five, seven, seven insert statements with all the foreign keys. And in they go. And now I can say select star from member. Oh, I do that. I make that typo all the time rum not form right and they're just numbers right but these are links now the role is not a foreign key but course id and student id are foreign key and when you construct a join you sort of join i think of it as joining through the member table now it turns out you can write this select statement here with student name member role course title the from and the member you can put them in different orders but i like to draw them in a particular order and particularly i like the join table in the middle right so I'm, I'm going from the student table, joining through the member table into the course table, but it, they're really just joined up and, and Postgres figures out all that stuff. And of course I got to order by and I've got the course title, member role, descending and the student name, just because I want it to look pretty because I want to see everybody next to each other in the course. So we can see, um, we can see all these folks. We can see Ed is the teacher of PHP and Sue is a student. Jane is the teacher of Python, and Ed and, Ed and Sue are students, etc., etc., etc. So that gets you through some many-to-many -many stuff. Now, the, this is the manual way of inserting with these four keys with these hard-coded numbers. You need to write these numbers down on a little piece of paper, 
Um, and I'm not going to make you do too much of this by hand because the next thing we're going to teach you is how to automate all this stuff. Cheers.